Security driving is a decision-making process that requires the driver to manage time and distance. And anything that slows that process down can and often does become an emergency. Whether driving the boss to work in a low-risk environment or driving an armored vehicle in a high-risk environment, understanding the basic principles of managing time and distance is life-saving knowledge. The kill zone is a phrase often associated with high-risk driving, but it can describe any scenario that creates an emergency for the driver. The scenario can be driving the principal to the office or taking him or her to a venue. Anytime the principal is moving in a vehicle, there's a possibility of an emergency scenario. What you will learn in this video is that kill zones are not subjective. They are a science. Escaping them, understanding them, and then avoiding them is simply based on the laws of physics. But no matter what the scenario, an emergency or kill zone is a time-distance relationship, how much time you have and how close is the problem. The kill zone is directly related to the speed of the vehicle when the incident occurs. If you have a lot of time and distance, in reality, you don't need a lot of driving skill. The less time and less distance the more skill behind the wheel is needed. As time and distance decreases, skill level needs to be increased. Measuring kill zones. While driving, you are managing time and distance. Time and distance is measured using a familiar dashboard instrument, the speedometer. The following is a simplistic but necessary explanation. A speedometer presents time and distance in the units of miles or kilometers per hour the time it takes to cover a given distance. It's a natural unit of reference that every driver is familiar with. The problem is that using the speedometer as a frame of reference for defining time and distance for measuring a kill zone is simply not usable. We need to have the ability to measure time and distance and kill zones in a different unit and a different frame of reference. We need to be able to convert miles per hour to feet per second or kilometers per hour to meters per second. And to do that, we must convert the standard unit of measurement, miles or kilometers per hour, to more practical feet or meters per second. It's not about how many miles you travel in an hour, but rather how many feet or meters you travel in a second. Emergencies, including vehicle violence, do not take an hour to happen, and the space in which it occurs is not measured in miles or kilometers. If a driver diverts their attention from the driving task, such as takes their eyes off the road, when their eyes return to the road, there's an accident or an attack scenario in front of them, they do not have an hour to react, and the space won't be measured in miles or kilometers. They have mere feet or meters and seconds to get out of the kill zone. At this point, there is a fine line between the time and distance that defines success and failure. Making kill zones easier to understand requires simple math. In this slide and the next, we'll be talking about converting miles per hour to feet per second after which we will then talk about converting kilometers per hour to meters per second. There are 5,280 feet in a mile and 3,600 seconds in an hour. To convert miles per hour to feet per second, we divide 5,280 feet by 3,600 seconds, which gives us 1.47. The laws of math allow me to round the 1.47 to 1.5, so for every mile per hour you travel, you move 1.47 or 1.5 feet per second. If you're driving at 10 miles per hour, you cover 15 feet in one second. If you're driving 20 miles per hour, that would be 20 times 1.5 or 30 feet in one second. 40 miles per hour? would be 40 times 1.5 or 60 feet in one second. 60 miles an hour would be 60 times 1.5 or 90 feet in one second. There's an easier way of converting miles per hour to feet per second, and it is nothing but a simple math trick. You take half the speed and add it to itself. 
If you were going 50 miles an hour, you take half of 50, which is 25, and add it together, so 50 plus 25, you'd be traveling 75 feet in one second. If you were traveling 70 miles an hour, half of 70 is 35, 70 plus 35, so at 70 miles an hour in one second, you would be traveling 105 feet. If you were traveling 90 miles an hour, half of 90 is 45, 90 plus 45 equals 135, so at 90 miles an hour, you would be traveling at 135 feet per second. Let's quickly examine NASCAR drivers. They're going down the straightaway at 200 miles an hour, half of 200 is 100, 200 plus 100 equals 300, so at 200 miles an hour, they are traveling at 300 feet per second, the length of a football field in one second. To convert kilometers per hour to meters per second requires a little math. There are 1,000 meters in a kilometer and 3,600 seconds in an hour. So we divide the 1,000 meters by 3,600 seconds, which would give us 0.278. Actually, it's 0.2777778. So we're just rounding up to 0.278. So to convert kilometers per hour to meters per second, we multiply the speed times 0.278. So if we are traveling 40 kilometers per hour, we're traveling 11 meters in a second. 50 kilometers per hour, we're traveling 13.9 meters per second. 80 kilometers per hour, we're traveling 22.2 meters per second. The 2.5 second rule. Research conducted by Dr. Mark Green indicates that the average driver needs 2.5 seconds to react to a problem. Using the 2.5 second rule, let's look at the distance needed to avoid problems at various speeds. If you're traveling 40 miles per hour and you're moving at the rate of 60 feet in a second, in two and a half seconds you would need 150 feet to react to the problem. You got that number by multiplying the 60 feet per second by Dr. Green's 2.5 second rule. At 65 kilometers per hour, you're traveling 18 meters a second, so you multiply 65 kilometers by 0.278. Using the two and a half second rule, you would need 45 meters of distance to react to an incident. At 60 miles per hour, 90 feet a second, in two and a half seconds, you travel 225 feet before you would react to the problem. At 90 kilometers per hour, you're traveling 25 meters per second, you would need 62.5 meters of reaction distance. When stuff happens, let's say you're moving at 40 miles per hour or 65 kilometers per hour or 60 feet per second or 18 meters per second, you would need 150 feet or 45 meters to react to the problem. So if there's a problem 140 feet or approximately 42 meters away, life's going to get very exciting for you. Whoever is driving the car at the time can't be average. Being average can kill you. How do you know the level of skill the driver possesses? A hell of a time to find that out is when bad things are happening in front of you. The driver-vehicle combination is a measurable skill that can be measured and enhanced through training. If you have been through a driver training program and that number has not been measured, it is problematic. You need to know what is the skill level of the driver. Let's take a look at a scenario. You're moving at the rate of 40 miles per hour or approximately 65 kilometers per hour and there's a kill zone 180 feet or approximately 54 meters in front of you. The average driver will take two and a half seconds to react to the kill zone. Playing out this scenario at 40 miles per hour or approximately 65 kilometers per hour, you're traveling at 60 feet per second or approximately 18 meters per second. The average driver will use up 150 feet or 45 meters just to react to the problem. And again, we got that number by multiplying the 60 feet per second or the approximately 18 meters per second times two and a half seconds. If the driver started out with 180 feet or 54 meters and it took 150 feet to react to the problem, that leaves the driver with 30 feet or nine meters away from the kill zone. Still going 40 miles per hour or 65 kilometers per hour. 
30 feet or 9 meters at 60 feet a second or 18 meters per second tells us that the driver has got a half a second to try to avoid the problem. Nothing good is going to happen from this. For the average driver, this is going to be a disaster. Let's look at the same scenario, but with some different numbers. Through training, the driver has decreased their reaction time from 2.5 seconds to 1.5 seconds. The speed is still 40 miles per hour or 65 kilometers per hour, which is 60 feet a second or 18 meters per second. We take 60 feet a second or 18 meters per second and we multiply by 1.5 seconds. The driver has used 90 feet or 27 meters, react to the problem leaving 90 feet or an extra 60 feet or 18 meters from the previous scenario. Escaping the problem is easily accomplished. The difference in the two scenarios is the difference that one second makes. In that one second, the scenario has gone from a disaster to escaping the kill zone. Here's some takeaways from this presentation. Kill zones are a time distance relationship. It's that simple. How much time do you have and how much distance do you have all relates to how fast you're going and it is a science that is of importance to the laws of physics. Keeping in mind, literally tenths of a second count. At 40 miles per hour, or 65 kilometers per hour, 60 feet a second, or 18 meters per second, a blink of an eye is 12 feet, or approximately 3.7 meters. Tenths of a second count. Every time you approach a kill zone, understand the parameters. How far can you see? How much distance do you have? If you stop in the kill zone, the chances of a survival are slim. This is not speculation. It is taken from historical information. It literally can mean the difference between life and death. Never drive faster than you can react. Thank you for watching. If you have an interest in learning more about this topic, please subscribe to this channel. Also, we invite you to check out the International Security Driver Association website, isdacenter.org. The International Security Driver Association serves our members by supporting an international forum of protection professionals who share their knowledge and experience for the education and benefit of the membership. ISDA represents all aspects of the executive protection profession from all parts of the globe. The ISDA serves members who are either inexperienced or experienced practitioners. Whether you're exploring a career in executive protection, new to the profession, hone your expertise, or established security executive, ISDA offers its members benchmark educational, networking, and marketing programs. Gain access to the Encyclopedia of Executive Protection and Secure Transportation, the ISDA Knowledge Center. The knowledge shared encompasses a wide range of executive protection and secure transportation-focused topics with resources, information, and metrics. For more information on all the member benefits, again, head on over to isdacenter.org.